Hello and welcome to this section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to talk about what we call exponents and order of operations. Has a fancy sounding title. I promise you that by the end of it you'll be understanding things that you never really thought would be so easy to grasp uh, through a bunch of example problems. This is the first section in this sequence where we're really going to start doing some things that sort of resemble algebra. A lot of students get turned off to algebra in the beginning because they open the book and they see all of these symbols and things that they've, that they've never seen before. Uh, exponents, numbers raised up high, parentheses, all kinds of things that you normally don't see until you get sort of into an algebra level. right? So we're going to break these things down. We're going to talk about what exponents are and make sure you really understand. And then we're going to get into order of operations, which tells you how to calculate things in algebra and what comes first, what comes second. I'm not going to bore you with a long list of rules. We're going to do it by working problems. So, what is an exponent? An exponent is a big word that just means it's a shorthand way of writing multiplication. It's a shorthand way of writing multiplication. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. If you see something in a book that looks like this, 4 with a 2 on the top, this is an exponent. The 2 is what we call an exponent. And it's a shorthand way of writing this. 4 times, the dot is times, 4. Right? So we call this 4 squared. Anytime you see a uh, 2 up there, it means squared. It just means that you take the bottom number and you multiply it by itself as many times as is indicated in the exponent. So it's 4 times 4. So in this case, 4 times 4 is 16. So 4 squared, or 4 raised to the power of 2, is 16. So for those of you that, that are scared and terrified of algebra, you should look at this and realize it's something you can understand. This 2 is not magical. It is just 4 multiplied by itself two times there. 4 squared. So likewise, 4 raised to the power of 3 would be 4 times 4 times 4, right? You multiply by itself three times because that's the number indicated at the top. And it can be any number you want. It could be, you know, 59 raised to the fourth power, right? And that would be 59 multiplied by 59 multiplied by 59 multiplied by 59. Now this is a very large number. Take these numbers and multiply them in your calculator, you're going to get a giant number. This is why we use exponents. It's kind of a big uh, pain to keep writing this multiplication out. We can write it like this and wrap it up much, much smaller and keep it nice and neat instead of writing all this multiplication out everywhere. So that's what an exponent is. That's the basic, basic picture. One thing you must make sure that you do not get into the trap of is making the following mistake. Do not make the following mistake. 4 squared, for instance, is not, that means not equal to, 4 times 2. A lot of students will look at these numbers and say, well, 4 times 2, that's 8. Well, that's wrong, because we already said that 4 squared is equal to 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2 is 8. So you can see that these two things are not equal. So you definitely don't just multiply by the exponent and you're, and you're done. What you're doing is you're multiplying the bottom number here by itself as many times as indicated by the number up there. So we already talked about it, but I'll just write it down. So for instance, 4 squared is equal to 4 times 4 is equal to 16. That's how you get that. All right. Let's do another one. Let's say we have 6 squared. What would that be equal to? That would be 6 multiplied by, by itself two times because that's the number here. 6 times 6 is going to give us 36. You can see right away that 6 times 2, if you just did that, would be 12. That's nothing even close to 36. So just forget about multiplying these. You have to multiply by itself. Now, it does not matter what number you have here. It could be a fraction, it could be a decimal, it could be anything. So let's use parentheses for the first time in this class. And we'll take the fraction 1 tenth and we'll raise it to the power of 4. Do not get scared by parentheses. Parentheses is something we're going to use a lot in this section. Parentheses is one of those things that scare a lot of students like, whoa, parentheses, they belong in an English book, they don't belong in a math class. Parentheses in math basically means that whatever is inside, you want to kind of keep it together, right? In this case, the power of 4 applies to the entire thing inside of here. And since a fraction is kind of this complicated thing, we wrap it in parentheses here to indicate that the entire thing here is raised to the fourth power. It's kind of like, you can think of it like a little uh, plastic baggie or something. 
You want to put a bunch of chips in a plastic baggie to carry it to a picnic. You don't want them spilling everywhere, right? If you have a large term that you want to kind of keep together in one unit, you just put parentheses around it to keep it there as a unit so that you know when you're looking at it that everything you're doing to that is, is applied to everything inside the parentheses. That's the only reason we're using it. So in this case, what this is going to be is uh, to use parentheses again to get you familiar with it. One tenth, right? Multiply by one tenth. Multiply by one tenth. Multiply by one tenth. Now I'm putting a dot in here, but really, uh, when you put parentheses right next to each other like that, it, it means multiplication. But for now, I'll just keep putting the dots. So this is exactly what you might expect, just like we were doing six up here, six times six. Well, this is what's inside, so it's one tenth times one tenth times one tenth times one tenth. We're doing it four times because we have a power of four there. 